never thought about working in EMS. I was going to school to finish my prereqs to become a physician's assistant. I was working in a hospital, following PAs around when they were doing their rounds. Started volunteering with my local hometown volunteer fire department and ran medical calls with them. And the more I was out there on the street, the more I realized that's what I wanted to do. Since I was a young kid, I told myself I was gonna be a firefighter or in the military. And as I got older in the high school, I figured out this was my career choice and my path I wanted to take. I got out of high school immediately wanting to be an EMS fire, but I didn't think I had what it took. Ended up working for the city of Fernandina in a maintenance capacity. So I was oftentimes at the fire station working on the stuff for the fire. Um, one of the captains kept telling me again and again that I should go back to fire school. I'd make a great fireman and after a number of times, I finally listened to him, and at 37, I decided to go back to fire school and become an EMT and eventually a paramedic. So in 1976 and 75, I was working at Miles Odom Funeral Home in Waycross, Georgia, and that was my first real job coming through life. And uh, instead of being at a funeral home, I wanted to go help people. I had wanted to be in the fire service slash EMS service since high school. I applied to fire school and went through fire school and then EMT school. And while I was going through school, every Friday I would come by the station and do ride-alongs. So I started working here when I was 16 years old uh, as a seasonal lifeguard and just, I loved it. Loved helping people out of the beach. And so I started um, looking at different ways that I can continue that. And I realized that, you know, I want to make a career here and decided to go to EMT school and be able to become a full-time position here at the fire department. I got out of the army and I worked a few odd jobs. It didn't really feel fulfilling and I wanted an adrenaline rush again. So got into the fire side. EMS, of course, is part of that. So when I became a nurse, I'd always wanted to be a flight nurse. So I went back and got my EMT and then challenged my paramedic. And so went from there and became EMS uh, flight nurse. I always wanted to work in EMS. I've had an um, interesting career path to get here. I've worked uh, as an artist blowing glass. I've also uh, worked as a dive master, uh, worked construction for close to 30 years, and then I was hired on here in front of Indiana at the age of 50, and this is just a great place to work. This is home. This is where I grew up, born and raised here, and I wanted to serve my community. I enjoy being able to, to give back to the community uh, that I live in and help protect the community that, that I live in. So it's always the best. You just never know where you're going to go. You never know where you're going to show up. So everything's a new adventure. Uh, and so it makes it a really exciting opportunity and you get to do everything. So anything across the board, you just never know what you're coming on to. We have a small local hospital where the majority of your cases are going to go to. And I think that's a neat thing because being that it's a fairly small hospital, you get to know the staff, you get to know the physicians, and there's definitely a sense of camaraderie and the feeling that you're part of the team when you show up to the emergency room. I wanted to work in Fernina Beach because of the small community and this department's you know, very much like a family. Um, it's not a big department, but we're all very close and it's just a great place to work. You could have one call throughout the entire day, or you could be up at three o'clock in the morning going to help someone for a life-saving event. Everything's different, every call we go on is different. We go into situations where we have to figure out what's going on, make sense of it, interpret it, and provide the appropriate treatment. And sometimes we come into very chaotic situations and that makes it even more interesting and we're able to use our problem-solving skills even more in those cases. It's very fulfilling to show compassion to someone who might just need a few words of encouragement or just five minutes of your time. I think CPR is one of my favorite parts. It's really important for people to know how to do it. And what's great about it is that you don't have to be an EMT or a first responder to know CPR or to do it. Well, they're lifesavers. Yes, they are <laughs> lifesavers. And there's the example right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I was uh, had a heart attack. I was out uh, jogging. I just started. It was fairly early in my run. We had 
two citizens who performed CPR. Then the uh, police came and administered an AED. And then the hero EMS people came in and stabilized Mark. And um, he coded several times and they were able to bring him back. And they were so professional. And when I got to the hospital, they could not have been better. We're not in front of Dana Beach at the moment. And where we are, I'm afraid if the same thing happened, I'd probably be dead because uh, CPR education is not as big a deal here as it is in some other places, like Fernandina Beach. We woke up one morning and my mother-in-law in the night had taken a severe turn for the worst in her health. We called the ambulance, um, they came, they couldn't get the stretcher in the room because it's an old house and they just literally picked her up, bed sheets and all, and, and gently put her on the stretcher and, and off they went. Um, all the while talking to her yeah. to calm her. She was 97 years old. We are so blessed to have who we have. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about it. The way they deal with mm -hmm. the people is Absolutely. just so professional. Was after my stroke, I got a card from the fire department asking how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I was like, what city does that? Yeah. I mean, to really follow up that way. So this, these guys are so unique, so professional. Um, I just can't say enough about them. It's not just their job, it's what they love. And it comes across so clearly. And so they're professional, but they're also very, everything is heartfelt and caring and sheer love, honestly. Uh, we actually live in Ohio. We were on our way to a vacation in Disney World, my wife and kids and I were in a hotel room in, uh, in Amelia Island. It was early in the morning and then I realized that he uh, had actually fallen off the bed and uh, I could not get him to respond. So that's when we called 911 and they were there just so quickly and they came in, they assessed the situation. Um, it did a lot of work and um, quickly got him out, you know, into the ambulance. And then they made a great decisions as to where, where to take him, which actually ended up being Jacksonville Baptist. They, they saved my life and their quick decisions, quick thinking, uh, being able to identify what was happening to me uh, was critical in getting me to this uh, state that I am today. So I'm very indebted to that group and their professionalism and responsiveness. Not only did they, were they comforting and helpful and professional, but they cared about the fact, you know, I was having to leave two children in a place where I'm not familiar with because I got in the ambulance and went with Mark and um, they were very reassuring. Um, I found out later that they went back to the hotel to check on my boys and just ask if there's anything they needed. We just found them and as well as the whole community to be so welcoming uh, for people that were basically strangers to us. Uh, they actually made follow-up calls and called me uh, to check on me, see what his condition was. And, um, and that really just meant a lot to us. Uh, definitely just true heroes and, and we're so appreciative. They made the difference. They really, they really did. did. One of the biggest goals that we have in this department is to always provide uh, the highest levels of care. One of the biggest challenges that we were facing was how do we improve overall um, cardiac arrest care? And what we looked at was how to improve our ROS scores. And ROS is our return to spontaneous circulation. So those patients that go into cardiac arrest, then we end up getting them converted either with defibrillation or high, high quality CPR. Um, we tried to increase that rate um, with the national average being roughly 20%. We wanted to drive ours up as high as we could. And now our return spontaneous circulation rate is at 63%. We are incredibly proud of the performance that our team has done over the last year or so. And we've made some significant improvements in a variety of aspects in pre-hospital care. Our primary focus in Fernandina Beach over the last year has been the big three heart attacks, strokes, and cardiac arrests. We feel that that's where we're gonna get the biggest bang for our buck, if you will, and really make the biggest impact in the community. That's where we feel as a pre-hospital fire department, 
EMS system, we can fundamentally save lives and really make the community a better place. We've become one of the most successful programs in the state and even in the country in regards to our performance in people that have a pre-hospital cardiac arrest with very aggressive high quality CPR. We're actually bringing them back to the life before they get to the hospital. So this year alone, people have gone into cardiac arrest, our team has responded, and in six of those eight cases, the patient has had a pulse by the time they've arrived in the emergency room. That is an incredibly impressive number, and it, it just goes down to the diligence and the hard work of our team, in addition to some of the very aggressive protocols that we've implemented. My recommendations for someone who wants to go into the EMS field and is not sure about it is, is to become a lifeguard. Go through that process, learn some of the basics of advanced first aid and be able to apply that out at the beach and, and see if you like it and enjoy it. And then that'll tie directly into becoming an EMT, a paramedic and a first responder. If you want to do something exciting and highly entertaining, this is the job for you. And the stories. I mean, the stories are the icing on the cake. I would say to keep an open mind, you're going to encounter people who are having the worst day of their lives and they need someone who can see things from their point of view. You might not be able to feel their pain exactly, but to understand that they're in pain or they're fearful or they just need somebody to comfort them. I would do a ride along, see if it's something you like, see if it's something you can handle and give it a shot. Go for it. It might be a little difficult and strenuous at times, but it's definitely worth it in the end. The actions you can take can uh, benefit people and it can literally save lives and it's a very rewarding thing to do. It's the best job in the whole world. I've made a life out of it for almost 40 years, closer to 50 years now, and um, I haven't regretted a day of it. There's no greater thing in life than, than to be able to say, I saved somebody's life today. And that's the opportunity that you get. Um, there will be times it'll break your heart when you can't save them. But when you go to bed at night and you know, I gave up my best effort. I did everything medically possible I could to save that life. Um, there's satisfaction in that. You know, you, every day is going to be a different day. No two days in your job will ever be the same. You're going to get people that will be incredibly angry that, that their relative called you. And I'm sure you're going to handle it with care, compassion. Um, and then you're going to get people that will never forget you because of you. They are alive today. And I'll give my example. A small stroke because of the care you give them, will allow them to have a much better quality of life. You can sit at a desk anywhere, but you're never gonna get that satisfaction. When you can perform the miracle that you did on our Christmas miracle. Yeah, really. Um, if you wanna do things for people, really good things like life-saving, I mean, this is the it, occupation for you. It truly is because it makes such a difference. We wouldn't be here today talking to you like this. No. And as a matter of fact, I'm, uh, I'm again running. So my doctor, you know, has really given me the green light on some of this stuff. But I mean, I just, I'm really amazed at the fact I could be dead right now and these mean, people, without these people that yeah. can help. So you know, you have so few shots in life to really make a difference. What a blessing at the end of the day to do a job that makes such a difference for people's lives. Because I am here now, three years later, because of them and got to walk my daughter down the aisle when she got married last July, got to see my middle son off to college to, mm -hmm. and, and spend this time that I would not have had with my wife and family. And it just, it, it that career is so critical and can really make a difference in people's lives and how their lives progress. One of our retirement dream spots now <laughs> is Amelia Island. Yes. <laughs>